Hey guys, it's me Vanessa. I wanted to make a video today because it is now one month post-op and on the 13th of March of 2017, I got the vertical sleeve gastrectomy and I'm just so grateful. I'm really grateful. I started this journey back in 2014 at 280 pounds. Within the three years, I lost about 35 pounds and then during the pre-op diet, I lost another 10 pounds. And so my starting weight for March was 235.2 pounds. And this morning, I'm so excited. I was at 223.8. And that is a total of 11.4 for the whole month of um, the first month. And I'm just, I'm shocked. Uh, there's a few reasons why, okay? so. Many of you who followed my journey, it's been over 10 years that I've ever been this small. So that is the main reason I'm excited. And for the past two years, I have been maintaining in the 240s. So to be completely out of the 240s, skip the 230s and get into the 220s, this feels amazing. And I'm getting closer and closer every day to getting out of the 220s. So. That's my next, you know, main goal. And of course, you know, I, I want to get to Wonderland. I want to get to the 100s. And that's something that I haven't been in for since I think 2000, I think it was 2006, 2005, something around there. So, and the smallest I got around that time was around the 180s. So I'm, I'm very, very excited. Now I do want to go over a few of the things that happened this month, um, things that I've noticed that have helped and kind of like where I am as far as my calories, my protein and all that kind of stuff. So when I first got the surgery, it was, it was really, really hard to get in all my fluids. I remember just drinking a 20 ounce bottle of Isopure was a chore. I mean, like it was really, really hard to get that down. It took me pretty much all day to drink 20 ounces. And it's understandable because after surgery, your stomach is very swollen. And so anything that you drink, uh, you get a lot of gas and all that kind of stuff. And so it was just, it was really hard to get any kind of fluids. Uh, it was a little bit discomfort. And then of course, taking pain meds, you're sleeping all the time. So every time that I would wake up, I would have to drink. And it was like a, it was like, a, oh, I gotta drink again type thing. So uh, that lasted for about two weeks. Uh, I was doing, I think 40 ounces the max uh, the first two weeks because I was on a clear liquid for three days and then for the rest of the two weeks I was on full liquids. Now clear liquids is anything you can see through. Full liquids is something that's creamy so um, anything with milk, um, anything that you can't necessarily see through. Uh, Sugar-free puddings counted as a full liquid. Uh, my nutritionist even told me that cottage cheese would too, but I felt that that would be too thick. Um, so that kind of thing, that's, that's what your full liquids are. Now on week three and four, I did soft, which was my favorite out of, out of all of the stages so far. So, and even in week five, I'm still doing soft, uh, because I'm comfortable with it and I'm going to try to move to solids next week. So that, that is my overall goal there. But the soft foods, those are the foods that are like wet so that they're easily, you know, slide down into your stomach. Um, good examples was refried beans. I would put cheese in there and then I would also add some taco sauce and that helped. Uh, tuna with a low fat mayo, I would have that. Um, another thing is scrambled eggs, but don't overcook the scrambled eggs. Um, I added a little bit of feta and shakes. I'm still doing shakes. Uh, what else did I add? Oh, cottage cheese in my um, soft foods. So those went well. I did try to branch out to other things. Like I ate a quiche one day, uh, the Subway meatballs. Subway does allow you to buy the separate toppings uh, for a different price. So I think it's like $2 for the six inch um, meatballs with some cheese and I think you can do the same thing with the tuna salad, uh, the chicken breast, all those kind of things. So those who are low carb, just keep that in mind that you're able to do that if that's all you can eat. 
Um, what else? So, okay, so currently, I'm very excited about this. Uh, my nutritionist wanted me to 1,000 calories to 1,200 by this stage, and I'm there. I'm really there. There's some times where I'll be at 1,400, but majority of the time I'm around 1,200. Uh, I have about 90 to 100 grams of protein each day. I get most of my protein not from protein shakes. I get them from actual meats, uh, like the tuna I'm getting them from, the eggs, the cottage cheese. Uh, I do do a little bit of deli meats with um, some string cheese. So all those kind of things, that's where I'm getting all of my protein from and, it, and it's helping. Uh, I feel like I eat a lot though. It's, it's weird, but I have, I break it down in six small meals and that's, that's really helped. My portions are still about a half a cup. Uh, I'm not supposed to be going over a cup of food at one sitting. So that's what I've been sticking to. Uh, I've been in my egg, one egg, I will add some feta, like an ounce of feta, and then I'll also add about a half a cup of mushrooms, and that kind of bulks it up to about a cup. So that's that's really good, that helps me out. And that's about it with the food-wise. Um, now, with my water, water has been my struggle. I'm right now up to consistently 40 ounces each day. I don't count my shakes, I just count the water in general. Um, but I'm at 60 if I count my shakes and my iced coffee each day, um, and I'm still on decaf. Um, but yeah, so my goal for this week and next week is to get up to 60 ounces of water and to continue with my 1200 calories a day. Now, the reason why my nutritionist wants me at this high of calories from the very beginning by month one is because they want to make sure that my metabolism doesn't slow down. Uh, that's one of the problems I've been reading a lot of like the different forums and stuff about people having their calories still around 600, 800 a day. And she says, especially that you're working out and that, you know, you want, you want weight loss, steady weight loss, uh, the best to do so that you don't eat up your muscle and, and all that kind of stuff. And that you actually just burn fat is to have your calories up enough to where your metabolism will still work the way it's supposed to. So that's why my calories are so high and I feel great. I have energy, I just, I love the way I feel. Um, because I'm going low carb right now, I'm not having any breads, no pastas, no rice, nothing, nothing other than fruits and vegetables. I feel great. Now, if I didn't get the surgery, I don't think I could stick with this long because I am one, I love carbohydrates and I live off carbohydrates. Um, so it's very hard. It's, it's very difficult for me. But with this smaller stomach that I have, I feel satisfied with the small amount that I eat. So I don't crave foods like I normally would crave foods, if that makes sense. Um, I do have some little items that I do have every once in a while, like I bought um, some complete cookies that I will use when traveling. Um, and that's mostly like sightseeing where I'm walking all day, um, like 15,000 15, steps a day type thing. So that's what I have those for. And I only have a portion. So I only have half of the cookie uh, and then the other half I'm gonna split with my daughter. So. I have those type of snacks just in case I need, um, but they're not an everyday thing like they used to be. Like every week I would have a full complete cookie. Now I only have a half and I haven't had one since last week. So um, I'm doing a lot better with that. Uh, no junk food, I've not had anything like that. Now I did try at Burger King the chicken fries and I have tried um, the popcorn shrimp. So I'm, I'm branching out to see kind of like what my stomach will allow me to have uh, because I want to learn for traveling. So like when we go somewhere, I want to know my limits. I don't want to go on vacation and get an upset stomach and feel sick. I want to like plan everything first, see kind of where my barrier is and see what I need to work with when I am traveling and when I am on vacation. So that's kind of exciting and scary at the same time because I just never know how my stomach's gonna react. There were two things that I did try uh, that did not settle well for my stomach. Uh, the first thing was a french fry. I tried one bite of a french fry and it felt so heavy and it did not feel good. So 
fries are off limits for me right now and juice. Uh, the second day in the hospital, I tried some prune juice. It did not feel well, so I got turned off on juices, and so I'm staying away from those too. Um, what else? Okay, so when I go to Starbucks, I always get a tall uh, iced coffee with soy, and currently I'm just doing decaf until I run out of my decaf at home. So I do a decaf tall, and then I add two um, pumps of the sugar-free hazelnut. So that's the only sugar-free stuff that I'm using currently. I am not doing any type of sugar substitutes. I'm not doing any sugar, nothing like that at home, normal schedule. Uh, when I do have an iced coffee, I just have the unsweetened vanilla almond milk, and I add my coffee, and that's it. So it's nothing, you know, I'm not, I'm not really big on sweets. I'm more in the salty, savory type stuff. So that has really helped. Um, I think that's about it though. So yeah, 223.8. I'm just, I'm so excited. I have been in the like 225, 224 range for like a week now. And it just seems like I just would not move. I wouldn't budge anywhere. So finally I'm under 224. Uh, I'm gonna continue moving in the right direction. Actually, I'm about to work out uh, now, and I'm gonna record uh, my workout today, but uh, exercise has gone really well this week. I am pleasantly surprised on how I'm able to move and do everything without any discomfort. Uh, I'm still kind of scared though. I know that it's like six weeks we're supposed to not lift any heavy weights, do any kind of planks, anything that's like high intense. Uh, I see my surgeon tomorrow, so I'm gonna ask him when I'm cleared to run, and I'm just, I'm excited, I'm very excited. I'm, like I said, I'm the lightest I've been in 10 years, so this is, this is a big deal. So I will talk to you all on Monday with my next official weigh-in, but I just want you guys to know, you know, this has been the best decision of my life, and I am so proud of myself for making this choice and for sticking with it. You know, those who have had surgery never feel bad about your choice. You know, we're all different. There's certain things that work for us and certain things that don't. And low carb diets did not work for me without the surgery. And this is the way that allowed me, this gave me my tool uh, to use to lose the weight that I needed to lose. Because if I didn't get the surgery, it would take me forever to lose weight because I had issues with food and I still have issues with food. Like I said, there's some times where I'll think, oh, I want this, but then I'm like, nope, can't. My stomach won't let me. So this has really, really helped me, and, I, and I'm so grateful for this, for this chance. You know, I feel so bad for those who want the surgery and their insurance will not cover it. Fight for it, you know. Uh, definitely research. Do your research. Find out what's good for you, what will work for you, and it's just, it's an amazing thing. So I just want you guys to know that I'm well, and if you want to follow my journey daily,